Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's video I'm taking a look at this one. This is a rather uh, unusual and special machine. I have never seen it before I got it so <laughs> I didn't know it existed but then again I don't know every machine that's uh, been made before so <laughs> anyway it is a MSX machine. This video was brought to you by PCBWay.com This beautiful looking machine is a Sakr AX170 MSX machine that was made by the Kuwaitian company Sakr and it is a, an Arabic uh, machine but it is made in Japan. It is written like this Sakr AX170 and I got this as a donation from uh, one of my patrons uh, Patrick so thanks a lot uh, to you. As you can see, the machine looks to be in very good uh, condition. It has some uh, dark marks here and there, but uh, I'm sure I can remove those. And as you can see, the keyboard is in fact <laughs> with Arabic uh, keys, which I don't understand at all. It has two cartridge uh, slots and the reset button. Otherwise, it doesn't uh, tell you any specifications on the front. It says MSX, so I guess it's uh, not MSX2. And if we take a look at the back side, there is a printer port, RGB out, audio and video out, and the RF out. And it comes with a built-in power supply. However, the plug is for 110 volts, but you can turn it here to 240 volts. So that's one of the things I'm gonna do with this machine is to replace this power cord because uh, this kind of uh, contact does not fit here in uh, Norway. We use the European standard. On the side here it has uh, two joystick ports and a cassette port. And on the other side uh, there's just a power uh, switch. So let's take a look uh, under the machine. So here you see some warning label uh, written in Arabic and in English and here it says something I can't read. It's probably the logo Sakr, Sakr Al Alamiya model AX170 and the serial number made in Japan, Tokyo. Alright so that was the outside uh, inspection and uh, my plan for this video is to uh, take a look at this machine uh, in detail and uh, see how it is uh, performing and take a look inside see if we need to do something there. Cleaning or some restoration we'll see. I haven't uh, opened it before. Also I'm gonna check out uh, if we can run some games on it. I got the cable here for a cassette so uh, that is okay and I also thought about making a diagnostics cartridge and uh, this will then be the first machine that I can use to test uh, an MSX diagnostics cartridge or maybe some game cartridge, we'll see. And I'll come back to some details about uh, the machine. Uh, there aren't much to find on the internet but uh, I'll do a little bit research and I'll tell you about the, the details. The Sakr AX170 is an MSX1 machine that was released in 1986 by Sakr Computers, that was a Kuwaitian company. It was localized by Al Alamiya and rebranded for the Arabic market. The machine seems to be a Sanyo MPC2 and after booting the computer it will be in Arabic mode. The CPU is a set 80 compatible and it has 64 kilobytes of RAM and 16 kilobytes of video RAM. The video chip is a TMS9918 compatible chip and the audio is an AY compatible chip. The machine comes with an Arabic firmware that contains a calendar program, a graphics drawing program, 
Arabic writer and also an English or French uh, word processor. The whole chipset is integrated into a single chip, an MSX Engine T7937 chip. The machine has a good amount of uh, connectors. It uh, features RF, composite and RGB video output. It has two cartridge slots, cassette connectors, uh, two joysticks ports and a parallel port. I'm gonna start by converting this to 240 volts and uh, replace uh, this plug. Uh, uh, however, instead of uh, cutting uh, the cable and uh, replacing the plug, I actually found this. And it's a white cable, so that fits this machine, doesn't it? <laughs> actually, no, when I take a closer look at uh, this, it says 220 to 240 volts. So it seems like this is actually uh, turned in to use uh, 240 volts. After all, even if it has this American plug, I don't know how the power system is in Kuwait, but uh, yeah, seems to be already 240 volts. That means uh, that I have to open the machine right away, which I will do. It has six screws on the underside. Big solid screws. So let's see now, how do we open this? Oh, that's simple. <laughs> and there are some uh, things going on here. Yeah, a couple of things to take off because uh, while I'm at it and have the machine disassembled, I'm gonna clean the plastics. And these small uh, LED PCBs actually got uh, contacts that you can uh, disconnect them. So now the keyboard can come off, I guess. Yes, and it has a uh, couple of uh, flat flex cables here. Be careful about those. And two ground wires. <laughs> Well, you actually don't need to unscrew those. The motherboard is fully revealed and as we can see, it is a single-sided PCB. And it doesn't look dirty at all. A little bit of oxidation, that's it. Not much dust. This can be removed. <laughs> And here we can see Sanyo, and it says Elna, and some number. Can't see any date codes. I'm gonna check uh, the chips. Maybe they have some date codes. Sanyo chips, Japan. So at first I was thinking, what is this? <laughs> so few chips, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I see a date code on these. These are. Uh, labeled 87, so uh, this was probably produced in uh, or before 1987. So there must be uh, chips on the back side of the board <laughs> because there's no CPU here. This is the power supply and here we can see the big transformer and there's a very big uh, transistor there with a large heatsink. So this is the power cable input. So I'm gonna take out this now. And uh, yeah, I think I need to cut these wires and solder in uh, the new one. Just gonna pull out this uh, grommet. The wires has these windings here, probably to reduce uh, noise, but uh, I'm gonna cut before that. So I'm cutting uh, between that and uh, the grommet. So I have spliced the first uh, wire and uh, use a bit of a flux. Then a little soldering. It's actually a little bit fiddly. I sit in an awkward position. <laughs> Yep, 
Yeah, I think that is good enough. Then I had a little bit of a shrink tube, but uh, it already shrunk down there due to the heat. So see if I can get it over this blob. Just heat the tube with the soldering iron. But that's not enough, so I'm using a little bit of uh, electrical tape as well. Alright, I think that's good. So now over to the next one. Then I had some more tape and I think this is good enough. Here you can clearly see the switch for uh, the voltage. It says uh, 240 and over here it says uh, 110 and over there it says off. The motherboard has no screws, it's just loose, uh, but uh, it's held in with these clips and uh, even the transformer just sits <laughs> all loose in here. That's a bit uh, peculiar. So actually I'm gonna take it out now to see uh, underneath it. There's one clip over here. These clips are a little uh, stiff and probably can break easy, I don't wanna do that. The transformer has wires with these connectors directly to the board, so... Simple design. So that's it. Oh, <laughs> so there weren't many chips on the backside actually as I thought. Only this huge uh, surface mounted chip. So uh, they probably integrated everything into uh, one chip. Toshiba T7937. But otherwise it looks okay. There's some uh, spider web there. <laughs> Here you can see the chip uh, closely and uh, I looked it up and it is actually a MSX1 chipset uh, engine actually a complete MSX1 system on one chip. It contains a Z80 clone and the AY38910 zone chip and a T6950 video chip and a PPI chip all in one chip. Of course that makes it very difficult to repair such a machine but hopefully this is a good chip that has good quality and lasts for a long time. And actually this chip wasn't used in many machines. It was used in uh, a couple of uh, vendors machines like um, the Sakura and the Toshiba machines and a couple of others. Just cleaning up a little bit of the dust and uh, then I'm gonna leave this motherboard for now. Clean some of the contacts with some uh, electronic cleaner. There has definitely been some insect living in here, so <laughs> this is probably the remainings of uh, some insect that has uh, left its uh, building, perhaps, I don't know. <laughs> the inside of the bottom case is a little bit dusty and dirty. I can't clean it in water because of this uh, large uh, metal sheet that is glued on. I could try to remove it, but... Uh, I guess if I use water, then this might start rusting. Actually, one of the screw holes has broken off. I don't know if it happens when I unscrew it or before, but I'm gonna glue that in with some super glue. So now that's taken care of. All right, so I cleaned the case and it turned out very nice. I'll show you later, but uh, now I'm taking a look at the keyboard. And in fact, there isn't much to do. It is uh, very clean and uh, not uh, a lot of dust. So I'm just gonna leave it. There is a little bit of uh, dirt uh, on this side. This dirt wouldn't come off with the uh, air, so uh, I'm just gonna take off these keys here and uh, clean a little bit around.
then just a little bit of uh, alcohol all over and uh, that's it I think. Okay, enough with the cleaning. I think I'm done with that now. Let's uh, test this machine, don't you think? I have actually tested it uh, once before and it did work. Then I used the step down transformer from uh, 240 volts down to 110 because I thought it uh, was 110 and it still worked, uh, obviously. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, connect the video here and uh, yeah, turn it on. See if it uh, blows up or not. Alright, MSX system. Microsoft. And Alalamia. Okay, so <laughs> that's the boot screen and uh, it is in Arabic and I don't understand anything. It's uh, completely uh, yeah, strange to me. But at least it works, now we know that. So now I'm gonna assemble the machine and then we can uh, take it for a test. Uh, there is a way to uh, get out of this menu and into the regular uh, basic uh, prompt on this machine, so I'll show you that later. So there is probably some more things I could do in this machine, like uh, replacing uh, the electrolyte capacitors, but uh, they all look good, so uh, I'm not going to do it this time at least. machine has been assembled and uh, I'm ready to turn it on. This machine has of course an Arabic firmware and uh, it will present an Arabic menu. So let's turn it on. All right, so it works. Great. So the menu that is presented, what I have figured out is that uh, it has uh, four different uh, options here and that is uh, four built-in uh, programs. Uh, this one is a calendar. And the number two by pressing the two key is uh, some graphics uh, capabilities. Not really sure how to use it, but uh, it has some uh, colors and you can uh, <laughs> you can draw. Yeah, I don't understand how to use it. And the number four, that actually turns into a, a text editor. And this actually is in uh, English with the normal uh, characters. As you can see, the machine turned out very nice after cleaning. I removed all the black uh, spots uh, that I could find, so now it looks like uh, new almost. Now to boot the machine into the regular basic, you can actually just hold down the control key while powering on and wait for the first beep. Then release the control and it should boot into a basic which it does, and uh, here we can see that it has 28.8k uh, bytes free. I actually got one game cartridge uh, for MSX, and it's this one. So I'm gonna test if that works. Yay, that worked. Nice. Athletic land. So let's see now we can play um, one player with the uh, keyboard. I haven't connected any joystick. I'm gonna do that uh, later. The output volume is a little bit low. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Oops. <laughs> so I tried a little bit and now I have figured out what to do. You're gonna jump down onto that uh, green circle <laughs> and then you can jump off. So the picture quality seems to be very good. Oops. <laughs> failure. All right, that's it for uh, the testing uh, right now or later I'm gonna check out uh, loading games uh, via the tape interface using uh, one of these two uh, devices. Since I only got uh, just one cartridge for MSX, I actually gonna build a couple of more and I got these uh, PCBs from the 8-bit manshed that uh, can be used for that purpose. So this is a quite simple PCB. It has one EEPROM, a little uh, capacitor and a little um, capacitor there as well and some jumper settings to configure what kind of EEPROM you have. So I'm gonna build that now. I found all the parts I need. Are you ready for some soldering? Just gonna clean a little bit of the PCB before I solder. Removes any fat or dirt. Placing the porch, that's a small uh, 100 uh, microfarad capacitor, 16 volts. And a tiny little uh, 100 nanofarad. Then some soldering. While talking about nice PCBs like this, if you ever need to have produced some PCBs uh, of your own and uh, you have made some designs or uh, use other designs, you can always uh, go to PCB Way and have them produce your PCBs. If you visit PCBWay.com, you can get an instant quote on uh, very good quality PCBs for uh, affordable uh, prices. Besides good quality PCBs, uh, PCBWay also uh, offers CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection molding, among other services. Let's insert the pin headers for the jumpers. This row of eight uh, pin headers doesn't seem to fit with the uh, holes. I'll just break it in two, maybe four of them fits, and then the next four. Yeah. That was the soldering, that was really quick. Just gonna clean and uh, we are ready to test. Well, not ready to test right away. This needs an EEPROM and uh, before we can do anything we need to program it, of course. This EEPROM is a Windbond uh, 27C512 and that is uh, a 64 kilobyte uh, EEPROM. So this can fit several um, ROM images then. The first ROM I'm gonna burn is uh, the diagnostics cartridge for uh, the MSX. There are probably several uh, 
out there, but I found one that I want to test. And it's this one, the MSX Diagnostics, uh, a 32 kilobyte ROM cartridge from nightfox.co.com. And the download uh, includes both a 32K binary and a 64K binary, so uh, that fits uh, with uh, the current uh, EEPROM you are using. And uh, I have a 64K, so I'm gonna select that one. So here I am in the XG Pro software for the programmer and I'm gonna select uh, the correct uh, chip, which is a Winbond. And it is uh, W27C512. That's the one, DIP28. First I'm gonna try and uh, read the chip to see if there's anything on it and that it can be read. Yeah, found something. Seems to be uh, full of data. <laughs> I'm selecting uh, the bin file and open it. Leave the settings as is and I have removed the check ID. And uh, yeah, here's a lot of uh, data, <laughs> a lot of uh, recognizable text. Seems to be uh, text for the menu. Uh, well, let's uh, program it. Yeah, and it verified and uh, succeeded. Now just insert the uh, EEPROM into the socket and uh, ready to test. But first I need to set the correct uh, jumpers on this one. And uh, it says uh, here for the 27C512, you need to set jumper seven, eight and nine. So jumper seven is there and uh, Jumper 8 is uh, here and 9. All right, ready to test. Um, just gonna put it in like this. I'm gonna make a case for this, uh, print a case on my 3D printer later. Yeah, that fits in and the cap didn't uh, conflict with uh, the case. All right, let's turn on now. All right, nothing happens. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, look at that. MSX Diagnostics. Oh, it just... Uh, reset and start it over again. Not really sure what you're supposed to do here. All right, I got it working and the trick is to um, disable uh, the boot menu and uh, make it boot into uh, basic by holding uh, control and release control. So that disables the Arabic ROM. And we're in the diagnostics menu, nice. <laughs> Space button one. So testing the screen, different uh, colors, background, etc. Yeah, that seems to work. Nice. So I'm gonna run a few of the diagnostics tests. Uh, let's uh, test the uh, screen one. Screen two. <laughs> okay, look at that. Hello. I can see some yellowing um, bleeding out from the black. But I guess that's completely normal. Let's see now uh, screen three. Okay. Right. Huh. 
<laughs> okay, lots of sprites and some black bars going up and down. Uh, testing that the sprites can move behind something, I guess. Monitor color, what's that? White test. Looping test, blue test. Okay, and there's another page with other tests. Keyboard. So every key seems to work. And there's a joystick test. I'm not gonna run that. I have actually tested joystick works fine with uh, games on this. PSG. Okay, seems to be some uh, sound test. It has three voices. Okay, <laughs> enough with that. Mixed mode. It says here you should see three text blocks if the VDP supports uh, mixed mode. Okay. Yeah, that's three text blocks. And we have some system info. MSX 64 kilobyte, VRAM 16K, and the memory layout, I'm not really sure. And we have the RAM layout. Okay, so there's uh, four 16K memory banks. So that was it. Uh, one thing I actually missing here is a RAM test. But the RAM on this machine seems to be all right. I haven't had any issues uh, this far. The next thing I want to investigate is if this uh, machine can load uh, some games from uh, tape files and uh, for that I am using this one. It's the SVI CAS device. This is a really nice device and works for uh, many types of uh, retro machines. So I hooked it up now with a cable. I made this cable myself. You can see that in uh, the video I made about the Philips MSX machine. This uses an SD memory card and I have loaded some MSX games onto this and uh, I have configured it to MSX 1200 board and uh, then I'm gonna go into files and uh, select uh, the MSX folder and uh, here's a few, let's test uh, Boulder Dash. So now it is ready and waiting for uh, commands from uh, the machine. So to load from cassette, you can use uh, load or run command. I'm going to use the run command and you have to type cas colon. Okay, so now it is actually starting to load. I have turned on the <laughs> audio feedback from, uh, from the file. So there it is, phone dash. So this is uh, working. <laughs> Loading time approximately five minutes. <laughs> it's not fast. It's uh, the original speed that was on uh, cassette tapes back in the day. Well, look at that. <laughs> that worked. Let's play a little Boulder Dash then. I used to play this a lot back in the day at the Commodore 64. Probably not that good at it anymore. Oops, I died. <laughs> I loaded another game, Bruce Lee, and this game I couldn't actually get to run on the other MSX machine that I have. So this seems to be more compatible. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the classic Bruce Lee game. This is a really good game. I played it a lot back in the day on the Commodore 64. I remember the sound and speed of it was a little bit better on the C64, I think. Oops, <laughs> I'm not good at it anymore.
All right, so now I burnt another room and I found a game on uh, Planet Emu. Uh, there's a lot of uh, ROM files there. I just took the ROM and uh, it was a 16K ROM tennis game. And since this is a 64K uh, EEPROM, I uh, took the 16K file and I concatenated it with uh, itself four times. So it made up a 64K binary file and I programmed another chip with that. So let's see if it works. <laughs> yes, it did. Nice. Super tennis. Select with cursor. Okay, I, I am just me, so I'm playing one player. <laughs> okay. How do we shoot or how do we serve? Okay. <laughs> So it was delete, I think. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty lousy at this. All right, that was it for this video. I got to play around with this uh, Arabic MSX machine and also built a diagnostics cartridge for it. I Try to find a case for this, but I couldn't since this is a non-standard size because it is actually a test cartridge. Anyway, the machine works great and I'm pretty pleased with that. So uh, with that, I just say thanks a lot for uh, watching and I really hope you take the time to subscribe and like my videos if you didn't do that already. So goodbye and hope to see you next time.